good, y'all? It's the Machete, Saria, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another American reaction. So excited about this video. If you're new to us and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're on the road to 200k. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family without further ado. Let's get into the video. Let's get it. Our day starts at the center of Accra City, where Nyo Nyo Canteen serves up a food that Nigeria and uh -oh. Ghana have been warring over uh -oh. for decades. It's called Jollof. Uh -oh. A few years ago, I went to Nigeria, and I ate jollof rice with Miss World Africa. Together, we shared this meal, and she told me that... Well, she tried it, she can't try Ghana jollof. I'm sorry. Uh -oh. Could I just be ignorant <laughs> to the rice in Ghana? You're not being ignorant. I'm telling you, you don't want to try it. No, 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 no. Ghana jollof is the best one. This is Chef Mame, the owner of Accra's high-end restaurant known as Gastro. She'll be my culinary guide for today's journey. I've tried jollof from a few other countries and I think the rice makes a big difference. Rice cooked in a fragrant mm. tomato-based sauce. It's the essence of all jollof variations across West Africa. Nigerian jollof uses parboiled rice, while Ghanaians opt for uncooked basmati or jasmine rice, yielding a more mm. aromatic outcome compared to Nigeria's more bold, smoky rice. So so I'm Nigerian. My dad is Nigerian, but I was born and raised in Ghana. My mom is Ghanaian. I have worked in Nigeria. Okay. I have eaten Nigerian jollof from home, like from things. restaurants. But if I'm to choose, I'll lean towards Ghana jollof. Here, Chef Chi Chi will take on the challenge of creating the perfect Ghanaian jollof. First, I'm going to crush my habanero. I don't want it too smooth, so I'm going to just crush it here in an ethnic way. But there's a catch. She won't let me leave until I declare a winner between Ghana and oh, Nigeria. Hey, uh, on the spot. I this mean, is tough. But first, I need listen. to see how... On the spot. I really like to see... He, I feel like he's going to go with Ghana. Yeah, he's I there. Say, yeah. He's there. <laughs> you gotta give it up. Gotta give it up. <laughs> she ain't gonna let him leave. Nah. That's one of the experiences I am most excited about cooking with him. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah I am yeah. really looking forward to that. That's Everywhere stuff. we go. Mm -hmm. Yes. She makes it. I think this is fine. So we can get into the main action. So we start with the oil. What are the ingredients that are giving y'all of the different subtle variances in flavor that people want so much? It's, it differs from what you add as your protein base. In this case, I'm using the flavorful tolubi fat. This is fat from goat meat. Oh, oh. that's not beef at all. <laughs> I know. I just, you said total beef. Tolo means goat, but we just add the beef so that people get an idea that it's derived from the beef fat. So now we are adding this paste I got from the onion, the garlic, the habanero, and then the ginger. Ooh, but well the habanero mm -hmm. smell is really mm -hmm. powerful, mm -hmm. but it has a spicy tang to it, but also yes. a freshness. Yes. So I want to get it turned to dark brown, then I go ahead to add the other dry spices. So now I'm going ahead to add my cayenne pepper, uh, my okay. curry powder here, and okay. then the dried herbs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add, to add the tomato paste now. I go on to add the habanero now. And then the bouillon cube. Technique, bro. Now we just leave it to stir up for close to 30 minutes so that our stew base will be ready for the rice. Nyo Nyo Canteen is located next to the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. So that means some of Chi Chi's food makes it all the way to the mayor of Ghana's biggest city. That Come means on, man. it must be good. So with jollof, it depends on the amount of rice that is going into it. And you need to constantly stir it up because I want it all to marinate well together in the pan. So this is going to take close to 180 minutes because I need to be careful with jollof. Jollof doesn't need rice. Bouncing. Look good. Okay, presentation. Joining our jollof, stir fried veggies, fried plantain, plantain, fried chicken, and raised and fried goat meat. Okay, hey, hey. And I like to try my rice. Right. Without hold, hold on, before we get into it, can we get another view of this, bro? Because this looked it. We need well together in the pan. So this is going to take close to 180 minutes because I need to be careful with jollof. Jollof doesn't need rice. Yeah, yeah. All right, y'all. I'm just saying the presentation looks fire. Mm -hmm. The steps to getting it to where it's at now looked at delicious. We made jollof, and I don't know. It's just something Nigerian about that my version. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait, so I, see, I don't know why she even finished the comments. It was in the comment section. Bruh. Just, uh, this look good too, though. I didn't know it was going to be that big of a deal, honestly, when we made it. Yeah. I, yeah. It was like, okay, so now you need to try ours. Yeah. And then the uh, Senegal was like, okay, now you need yeah. to really try where it's from. 
Yeah, <laughs> see, jollof <laughs> rice is a door that we wasn't prepared to walk into because mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. many people was in our face about it. It's like, <laughs> man. But it was really good. Delicious. It was really good. It's fire. Our children loved it. It's fire for real. Look at that. Joining our jollof, stir-fried veggies, fried plantain, fried chicken, and braised and fried goat meat. Crazy. That's it. That's it. I like to That's try it. my rice without anything first. That's yeah. how you know it's That's good jollof. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Mm. Delicious. Mm -hmm. The fat from the goat is very apparent. Mm. Savory, spicy. The heat is just a slow, glowing warmth right here in my chest. Not super spicy, and I don't even feel the spice really in my mouth. I just feel it right here. You've got bits of, like, goat skin here, right? And protein. It reminds me of what we tried yesterday. Because if you eat just, like, a nice big piece of protein like this with some intramuscular fat, that's a lot more tender. If you get a thick piece of skin, it's a little bit more chewy. But it's nice to have some different textures in there. A little bit of protein, a little bit of rice. Got a five mix, yeah. Jumbo life. Yeah. I'm blown away. This is the type of thing, once you get going with the spice and the rice and the protein, 2,000 calories later, you're like, what happened? And you know, once you're having an event, everyone is looking forward to the jollof. Be it funeral, be it names for me, Wedding. There's no party without jollof. And just the art to it, that's what I said in the last episode that I just want Ghana to be remembered for jollof. Just like Brega is for Germany and passes to Italy, I want Ghana to own the jollof scene internationally. Speaking of foods that represent Ghana, we have a lot more to see yeah. today. We're headed to three more locations. Oh wow, this was like quite a process. Chi Chi, our journey is finished with you, but thank you so much. This was incredible. And thank you for not making me choose between Nigeria and Ghana. Well, you know, it's not over yet yeah. because we were going to oh. ask you. Look at the time. Look at the time. We better get going. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah. Stop. Let your heart speak. How about I say it this way? I've had jollof in two countries. Mm-hmm. This is the best jollof rice I've ever had. Thank you. It was a Nigerian. (laughs) (laughs) First stage. (laughs) All right, bro. So obviously we're going to look at different other dishes as well, but the jollof rice dish was enough for me. I thought that was like the really, it's a really great presentation Mm because it's an actual delicious dish. And just the way she had all the ingredients, how she cooked it down, meaning that Mm -hmm. she didn't take the habanero and mushed it. She added to the, you know, just crumbled. Right, Which right. is good to know, you know what I'm saying? So right, that right. was good enough, but we're going to keep going. Right, yeah. and even though it was just rice, I love how she presented it. Because you mm-hmm. eat with your eyes first. Mm-hmm. And if something is presented in a way where it looks good, like you want to try it. Mm. Even if it's something that you may not want to, you know, be open to, presentation alone does so much. So ladies, I understand y'all know how to cook, y'all be throwing down. Mm. But baby, when he come over there... Just go a little extra mile and present it. The pre- yeah, yeah. Okay? Uh-huh. Present the presentation. It matters. It does matter. Even the plate matter. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, the plate. Don't, don't, don't be doing them styrofoam. What the, you got on paper plates? Paper plates. Yeah, don't do the paper plates. Don't I got to ask this question, though. So do you all view food from the presentation standpoint, or are y'all more like a nostril smell good mm, type of individual? Because sometimes the kitchen can be cooked. Like, I'm talking about it's going crazy, and it's like, that's all I need to know I'm finna mm-hmm. mess this dish up. Right. Let me know in the comment section. I love Not to know that. Don't, don't hand me something that look like slop. Well, it don't have to be slop. Just present it, you know, place the little, the meat a no. certain way. Yeah, yeah, and I'm saying, <laughs> it, don't, it don't have to be all that. Like, I'm just saying, some people rather see their food look good, right, and right. some people rather smell it to know that's enough for them to want to continue yeah, yeah. whether the presentation is bomb or not know. you know i yeah, know yeah. that's what i said mm-hmm. for me well you you, you, you know it, yeah if it's day. if it's like you know like a stew mm-hmm. or something put a little yeah, yeah make the put a little know, basil maybe yeah a little yeah. basil but i'm saying you know the organization of the meat even even the far cross spoon have to be presented right <laughs> Put it to the side, not right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> here, we get, here we go. Yeah. Where have I brought you? <laughs> we are in Jamestown, Kinky House. One of the best Kinky House in all of Accra, they are saying. A Kinky House is like a bakery, but instead of bread, they're making, well, Kenke. Kenke is one of our local foods made with corn dough and then cooked inside the corn husk. The daily production of Kenke begins with a lot of corn dough, which gets divided in half. One portion is placed in a giant pot of boiling water and mixed until it becomes thick, while the uncooked portion is set aside for later use. Right. 
The corn dough itself is fermented for three days, giving it a distinct taste and smell. Stay at Sorry, I have best that. So in a day at the Kinky House, they start around 7 a.m. They try to make sure they get it on stove by 10 a.m. Kinky is more like an afternoon dinner meal. So like around 3, 4 p.m., people are looking for that hot Kinky to buy. And if your Kinky is good by 6 p.m., you're done. So right now we have some Kinky that's halfway through its journey. So the next step is for them to mix in the fresh corn meal. Oh wow, this looks like quite a process. Yeah. So once the dough is formed, she kind of shapes it into small balls and then she puts it inside a couple of corn husks. Yes, they're practically like overlapping until they get all around and then they dig a hole in it so they can twist it and push it in. So this is a technique to make sure that it doesn't unravel when they're oh, cooking it. Oh, who taught her that? Me, I mean, it's that the Her mother started it 30 years ago and now she's too old to actually do it. So she passed the recipe down to her and then nice. her and her daughter are now taking over the kinky business. From here, the bundles undergo a four-hour boiling process before they finally become soft, glutinous kinky. Should we give it a shot? Yes. You fresh, you need to be seated, nice position, <laughs> ready to dig in. You don't want to peel everything because you okay. don't want your kinky to get cold yep. and dried up. And you got to make sure, you know, even though it's moist, you got to give it a nice... Okay, you uh -huh. mix it around a little bit. Yeah. I'm just very curious about the taste because it smells so sour. It's semi, and if you get a good kinky, it's a nice blend of sour, savory. It's sour, it's so sticky, soft. This is what you want. You want a nice soft kinky. It's almost like Play-Doh, but stickier. You know, when I went to a country like Tanzania, they also utilize maize corn flour a lot, but it usually is just in the form of ugali. But I come here, and between maize, corn flour, sava, rice, I see so many different types of carbohydrates being eaten as part of the normal diet. So why do you think there are so many different options here? So every tribe has their own starch or carbohydrate that goes with the Amasanti. We're known for fufu. The Gans are known for their kinke. You know, the Ewes are known for their banku. And then you have the Northerners who have their TZ. I think there's so many soups. So the kinke has to be good, but whatever you're accompanying the kinke with has to be even better. Right here, we have uh. Chef Mame's favorite, salted pig feet soup. To make it, salted pig's feet are okay. boiled to reduce their concentration of salt. I'm curious why that would be necessary to salt the pig's feet rather than just finding them fresh at the market. So you know that a lot of our food travels back centuries back where fridges weren't made and how do you keep things from spoiling right you're wow. curing it with salt and you're able to leave it out without it spoiling in a wok onions are fried with a generous amount of oil then comes so the gotta make mention that is important that she mentioned that mm -hmm. because in today's world they have so many add ingredients so food can last longer mm -hmm. right bread for instance in um i know like in france and locations like that their bread don't last long at all it actually <laughs> expires in a few days, but yeah, here our bad. bread gives like a week and a half, and of the then preservatives and stuff. yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I can understand why she would say back in the times we use it this way. We're gonna continue to hold it on to it. I think that's pretty dope. Mm -hmm. I think this may be the first time I've seen like a pig feet stew or soup mm. because our culture has pig feet. Pick right. Pig feet. Cow I think they call it cowboys too, but they put the stuff uh, in. Oh uh, yeah, when they add everything in there. Yeah. Um. Y'all will hear us say a lot if you're new to the channel. Our culture, our culture. That means, aka, we particularly don't don't eat that, mm. but our culture does, mm. right? Um, I just remember my grandmother just devouring it, and I'm like, "Do you want me to go get the pig for you?" <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "Girl, that's good." I gotta see how I, uh, uh, <laughs> the pig lip in the yeah. chips. Mm -hmm. I just remember them like, I, I, like it would be holidays. They'll put the whole pig with an apple in the mouth. Yeah. And I never understood it. I was like, what's going to happen? Because the pigs still look kind of up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Still pink. <laughs> kind of up. You know? So uh, it's no, like, when they, they put the, the the grill and they put it in the ground, I don't know what it's called because that, that was one part of our culture that I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go in the kitchen mm -hmm. with, with the chicken. Mm -hmm. And they, they what that, you call it? In the one, ground. That's one thing about us though. Like they, they, they be cooking it. everywhere. They be outside mm -hmm. in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. They got people that's in the living room, probably you know, cut potatoes or something. Yep, it's that was me everywhere. Peeling shrimp. 
Pin of shrimp. Pieces and seasonings. Red bell pepper powder, tomato paste, tomato puree, nutmeg powder, curry powder, and a cube of chicken bouillon. Yeah, sure, G for letting that tomato pop on the like oily scarlet Stank pool. It. They're joined with more onions. Swirled, swirled, and swirled more, and after some time, it's finally done. All right, here we go. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a dip. Oh, mm -hmm. that looks so good. It does. Mm. Yeah, you want to balance the kinky with a nice spicy stew. This is definitely oh, it. Yeah, I don't know if the sourness is coming from the kinky or from the stew. It's the kinky. But that adds an interesting mm -hmm. note when combined with everything it's here. It. Otherwise, it's super savory, very mm -hmm. flavorful, and then it's spicy too. Let's talk about those feet. It seems like they've cooked it well where the meat is literally falling off the bone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that's good. This is fantastic. I think since they've salted it, it's changed the texture of the meat and yes. it's a bit more dense. Yes, and then it also gives the bones this soft, gritty texture. I feel like my favorite part of eating pig feet is to play with the bones at oh, the really? end. You can literally chew down the bones. And you know, even though you bought the feet salty, you don't want it to be overly salty. Right. So you cook it for a while and then you add it to the stew. I gotta take my watch off when I eat. <laughs> <laughs> so I know they ain't mentioning it, but what is, what's one would you go for and i'm just saying okay you probably but just bear with me would it be chicken feet or pig feet i'm off the backbone with pig feet pig, because pig got more meat on pig. the on the bone and then the, the little skinny foot from a chicken it's with like the nails yeah with the nails i can't do that I, 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 I <laughs> okay do, nah Okay. I'll, I'll do the pig. Okay, off the back. I'll be here. Coming up, yeah. Chef Ma Ming introduced me to a new kind of pancake. I can yeah, eat this with right. some whipped cream and maple syrup, I think. No, it's not that type of pancake. And she'll invite me to try some high-end African food cooked up by Chef Ma Ming herself. This can potentially be one of the most expensive restaurants, depending on what you pick on the menu. And you can get a $1,500 dish. But first, I want to learn how this Ghana-born fine dining chef cut her teeth in New York City. Oh, yeah. I was born in Ghana, but I spent 24 years of my life in New York City. I started high school in New York. After earning her culinary certificate in New York, Chef Mame honed her skills under the guidance of renowned Ethiopian chef Marcus Samuelson at his Red Rooster restaurant in Harlem for five years. And how long have you had your place in Ghana? I opened my place 2020 January and then COVID hit. <laughs> you know, it was sad that we had to close, but I feel like I used that time to restructure and really get myself prepared and have the concept exactly how I want it to be. It wasn't so bad. And how's it going now? It's going great. Soon we're going to learn more about your restaurant and I'm going to be trying some Ghanaian fine dining food. Yes. But for now, I hope you're not full. Yes. So we're going for more. Yes, I'm interested in this. Tatale is a genius Ghanaian solution to overripe, unappetizing plantains. It turns them into an appealing pancake that flawlessly okay. complements this bean stew known as a boy boy. Boy boy. Oh, that's Wait different. Minute. Very different. Didn't and see this, this coming. Is, this is why I like his show. Because first of all, it's structured very nicely. It is. Second of all, he <clears throat> shows us things that we have not heard about before. Right. We have watched a lot of Ghana, uh, Ghanaian, Ghanaian uh, I think I videos. Say, I think I say Ghanaian. Yeah, I think you do. I'd be saying it sometime like that. Yeah, we have watched a lot of uh, food reviews from Ghana, but they all basically show the same things, right? Right. He's showing us stuff we haven't seen before. This is like the third thing that we haven't seen. Right. Love it. It begins by mashing overripe plantains into a smooth paste. Next, flour batter, pepper paste, ginger paste, and onion unite in a flavorful mix, wow. preparing to welcome that mushed up plantain. You can just use the plantains alone because once you start cooking it in the pan, it will just fall apart. But right. you also don't want to add too much flour because you don't want it to become doughy. The final step is frying. This is palm oil. It greases the plate so that the tatale will not stick into the pan. It adds flavor to this. it as well. Sika is the second generation. And we still got a lot of palm oil. Yeah, we still got a whole big bottle of palm oil. Yeah, it's precious. <laughs> we have some maize. It actually helps with the taste too. Like palm oil yeah. does make the food have a different level of taste compared to our original like uh, vegetable oils. Yeah, yeah. Or butters, you know first what I'm saying? All, first of all, y'all, y'all know we was um, doing a lot of um, cooking different foods from different cultures. Yeah, yeah. We bought the palm oil. I think it was for the jollof. Why Dion want to use the palm oil? Oh, here she is. Here she is. I'm like, is. sir. 
Yo, it works. Sir. It's we just, just different. Using I told these. y'all, whenever we start getting these recipes, I was gonna start using more of it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? The ingredients. If you're in the Caribbean right now, I still got the jerk seasoning. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We still got the plantain, the, the, the ca- Canada. Powder. We still powder. hey, all of that. We still got it. Trust <laughs> me. Owner of this 50 year old establishment. I make about 500 pieces a day. I learned this recipe from my mother. She also learns it from her grandmother. It's a staple food for people from the central of Ghana. It's like he was excited mm. for this. Well, that is such a unique combination. You can taste the mm. ginger. You're right. It's not just pure plantain. There's a unique texture where you can mm-hmm. taste this partially plantain and partially mm-hmm. some other binders kind of helping mm-hmm. it stick together. Very flavorful. But yeah, it's become like pretty bready. But mm-hmm. not too much, you know, right. yep. just the right amount. I love the tatales. But growing up as a child, I wasn't a big fan of the aboboy itself. Aboboy. 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 This thick stew starts with bambara beans, soaked overnight, then boiled until soft. These West African beans look a lot like chickpeas, but lack the chickpeas' thick outer skin. When the beans are ready, Sika adds some pepper paste, then some ginger paste, allowing it all to cook into a thick, fragrant stew. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Like Very tender. Very starchy. Yes. It's got like a, a thin skin on the outside. Ooh, it's already, <clears throat> already. Oh, spicy. The fact that mm-hmm. the way they prepare beans is similar to how we prepare beans. It's Gotta soak them joints. Yeah. The gravy. Mm-hmm. Because I have seen people make red beans and I ain't see a gravy and I'm like, how? <laughs> how? <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> this is why you add the plantain to balance it out. Let's go for it. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's like the beans make it creamy. I like that. And you know the best part about this dish is completely vegan. Yeah, that's really important to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask, I've been fortunate to go to about nine or ten different countries in Africa, and I've just noticed that internationally, African food is not very known. Why do you think that is? So you have countries like Italy, France, Spanish countries that are already popular when it comes to vacations and traveling. Then they moved into the culinary. Now the food is very popular, but it wasn't the same for Africa. It's very rare you hear people say, I'm going to Ghana for vacation. So even though African restaurants were available, Available even in New York, but it was more so patronized by the local that are, you know, the Africans who have moved there or, you know, a few locals in the neighborhood who understand the food. So not only is there not really enough knowledge. Let's talk about that because where we're from, <clears throat> it, it, I could say that I know of Caribbean restaurants mm-hmm. um, where we're from. But not really. Like, it was only in New Orleans. Yeah. It wasn't in, like, places where you grew up. No African restaurants, really. No, honestly speaking, I don't remember seeing one. Mm-mm. You know, um... No. And, and I don't remember seeing any. Maybe because outside of New Orleans, immigrants don't really... Well, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. Immigrants really don't go to like our home state other than like hispanics or um central americans Mm -hmm. so maybe that's why but like and i'm i'm sure like new york definitely has more of that you know with different different cultures yeah texas and i say texas but what i mean is like the major cities like Mm. dallas san antonio houston yeah but the little small towns, not no, really. No, you're not going to catch them. Nah, not really. Nah. Because we, we eat our own culture. Foods. Yeah, if anything. Yeah. African food around the world, mm-hmm. but when it comes to something like African fine dining, it's completely unknown. But you, yeah, this true. is a challenge you yourself have taken yeah. on, and this has become your pursuit and your life yeah. mission at this yeah. moment. Yeah. So the goal that I had for my restaurant is to be able to showcase Ghanaian dishes in a different light. So more modern and a fine dining skill, but one thing that we always try to do is we want you to still link back to the roots and still yeah, have the authentic flavors that it's supposed to have. So that's what we do to at Gastro. Chef Mame. Hello. 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 Let's talk about the dish that's in front of us right yes. now. 
This is inspired by a street food yes. that's very common in Accra. I saw it at the market recently. Can you tell us the inspiration for this dish? So the normal kusuyami meko in the oh. streets you see is just boiled the egg, eggs yeah, yeah. and they put the pepper inside. When I decided I wanted to put the eggs on the menu, I thought of, um, you know, how can I make it fun and not make it just regular eggs? Utilizing turmeric and red cabbage, Chef Mame creates natural dyeing solutions wow, to submerge the boiled dye. eggs, infusing them with color. I grew up in New York, and in the Easter time, we have that these eggs. eggs. So I thought about, oh, you know, brought the colored mm. idea in there. Though dyeing the eggs makes them pretty, all the flavor Love comes it. with the toppings. So right now, I'm going to put in some red onions into our asanka. We're going to add in some pepper. We're also going to add in some pakoshito. We're going to also go. add in some sea salt. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we're good. We're ready to add in our tomatoes. You have to make sure you get this nice and smooth. Woo! It's hot, but it's delicious. <laughs> Take some pepper. I like the natural right dado, man. That's, We've pickled some onions and then we just put it on top. Garnish with spring onions, chives, dill, whatever you want. And That's this is how I make my kosiana <coughs> meko. All right, let's go for it. You just throw the whole thing. All right, so because I'm not a big fan of hard boil, mm -hmm. this dish looks good. I would try this. I would try this without any that. doubt to think that it's going to be, you know, what I know hard boil is to taste like for me. But for this, it looks delicious you know what i'm saying i would like that it's pleasing to your eye that's why I mean, hey, that's a Fine, pres Donnie. presentation did you ever think a presentation. egg can look so expensive <sighs> today yes <laughs> yes i've been proven right, yeah you are 11 dollars right now <laughs> <laughs> mm, oh yeah mm -hmm. oh that's so good the hard-boiled egg part is a hard-boiled egg, but it's about everything okay. that you put on top mm -hmm. of there. The first thing it's I feel is just heat, radiating heat. Some sourness from, there's pickled onion on here, mm -hmm. which is really fragrant as well. It's fun and delicious too. Mm -hmm. And I love that it harkens back to something local here. It's got roots in street food. It's something I've seen here on the street. And then this is the elevated version. It's They're related. Beautiful. It turned out perfectly. Thank oh, yeah, you, definitely. thank you. Next, we're gonna be trying something really special. Yes. You may not be able to tell right now, but this is a guinea fowl. Let's it out oh, one like of them. And this guinea fowl has been curing under a thick coat of salt for three hours. Now it's removed from its salty cocoon and placed on a bed of thyme, blanketed with peppercorns, garlic cloves, more thyme, and a luscious layer of duck fat. Once sealed with foil, the baking tray is placed in the oven for four hours. In the meantime, let's discuss prices. It's my understanding that this food is part of a bigger tasting menu that you're serving here. Yes, our tasting menu can go anywhere from $100 to $1,000 per really? person. So would that make this potentially Ghana's most expensive restaurant? This could potentially be one of the most expensive restaurants depending on what you pick on the menu. You can get a 30 city dish or a $1,500 dish. The goal is to make it so that everyone is able to dine at Gastro. Even if it's a once in a lifetime experience you get to experience this fine dining version of Ghanaian dishes and such. The guinea okay. fowl relocates from the pool of duck fat to a pan of bubbling oh, oil. Once the guinea fowl skin is crackling brown, Chef Mame portions it and tops it with yaji powder and pickled veggies. Then she serves it with jollof rice. Now, oh, at the end of this, do I need to say which jollof from this video is the best? If you want to choose violence, but I try to keep the peace, so... <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. All right, I'm going to start with this. It looks like a little oh, lollipop. Mmm. Mmm. Nice crispy outer layer. Mm -hmm. And it's not tough at all. I would say it has some density to it. It has some bite to it, but it's not tough. Some nice dark meat, mm -hmm. great flavor on there. The yaji spice on the outside really adds another dimension. I like this. Right here, I got the thigh. <laughs> hey, I feel like he he, he basically want to say, you did that. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. I heard, mm -hmm. I, heard, I heard, you did that. This is the vibe. It's yeah. such a lean bird, but amazingly, it doesn't taste like it's lacking any fat. Not too gamey. Like if you that. add a little bit of like the duck. slaw on top to it, it gives duck. it a little sweet, spicy. Oh, it's great. And you know, it's a small bird, mm -hmm. so it's perfect to share to get a good taste and then move on to something else. Right. This is Ghanaian fine dining. This is what it should be. For you, what is your goal with this place? What do you want to do next? Gastro right now, I believe, is doing great, but we need a Michelin star. Mm-hmm in Africa. 
gastro right like now it. may not be at the level of Michelin star, but my goal is to continue to elevate the Ghanaian dining experience Love to it. get it to the point where we have stars in Ghana. Would that be the first Michelin star in all of Africa? Yes, which has to change. There are so many amazing restaurants in Africa altogether, yeah. even in Ghana here, you know. I don't know why why we're not there yet. I think it's long overdue. Sir? You go to, obviously, all across Europe. That's where it originated. You can find tons of Michelin mm -hmm. star restaurants in the USA, but especially around Asia, too. So many different places that have been recognized. And there's many ways to be recognized, but the Michelin star seems to be the that one mm -hmm. nearly unachievable mm -hmm. sign of mm -hmm. perfection. So I think it's a fantastic goal. For more fun food videos, oh man, me. that's a wrap. That's how we that's ended it. Uh, all right, so make sure you guys go check the channel out. Um, at the end of the day, I feel like Africa do have some things that are slept on that people just don't mm -hmm. know about, and there's yeah. some great experiences for people to have. Mm -hmm. We do know that Nando's did land in Dallas uh, not too long ago, which is mm -hmm. a good thing. So, but there's other nice brand restaurants like this one that I feel should be international. Yeah, just like every other restaurant that gets the flowers to do that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think they should be able to push it out. Yeah, I'm just ready to see more of the future for mm. Africa. Yeah, I feel like because y'all y'all see how we feel about Africa as a whole, how we have fallen in love with all of the different cultures. We have literally discovered Africa with you guys. You literally. Know? So yeah. I I'm just so happy for the future and what it has to offer. What's well it? Yes, across the continent. All right, y'all. We hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Be sure to subscribe. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.